Hello my friends, I hope you're having an amazing day today, and welcome back to an episode of r slash Petty Revenge, where two of my favorite things come together, a good revenge and some laughter. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a revenge-filled journey. And before we get into it, hit that like button, letting me know how much you enjoy Petty Revenge stories on this channel. With that said, I hope you stay for the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button, guys, for future videos. This first story is by user Gotham with Glitter, and it's titled "Sent My Neighbor a Glitter Bomb Because He Was a Dickhead to Me." I teach kids online, so naturally I have to be on the phone video chatting with them. I'm working one day, and my neighbor decides to start blasting music, and I instantly can't hear my own student anymore. So I go outside and ask him to turn it down. He has the speaker on his front step, just cranked all the way up. And here's how the exchange went. I said to him, "Um, excuse me, can you please turn down your music? I'm on the phone with a student, and your music is a little loud." Him, surely right off the bat, said, "So, so I'm on the phone. I can't hear my student. So, so I'm trying to do my job. I'm working." So, so can you please turn your music down? He then said, "Yeah, I'm doing it. Get back to your house." He was confrontational and angry from the second I started talking, and clearly had no intention of turning it down. So I just walked away. And as I'm walking away, he was like, "Oh, you want to do it like that?" I was just so baffled that this guy would be such a dick for literally no reason out of nowhere. I'm trying to do my goddamn job, and he could have been a bit nicer about it. So I mailed him a homemade glitter bomb package. I folded it up and glued the edges, so he'll have to pull it open, and the glitter will explode everywhere. Opie also linked a picture of his homemade glitter bomb as well. Very classy, sir. This second story is by user Sparky Mountain, and it's titled "You're gonna bully a little girl and spit water into her face at the water park. Prepare for the tempest." So I took my two young sons to the local water park yesterday. They had a blast. I stayed in the lazy river most of the time with them. I tend to stay about ten to twenty yards behind them, close enough to keep an eye on them, but far enough for them to have some fun. I'm minding my own business, floating in the lazy river, when suddenly a wild bully appears. Cue the ten-year-oldish husky boy who's following around a much smaller girl. I'm observing over the course of a few laps of the river as this little turd boy is constantly teasing and intimidating this little girl that's like half of his size. I lap them. I'm now right behind the victim and bully. My own son's constantly in my view, and I get close enough to hear the bully trash talking to his victim, trying to get her to leave the pool. She's visibly scared and trying to get away from him. There are no accompanying adults with these children. And this is when I see the bully take a mouthful of water and flat out spit it into the girl's face. At this point, I'm like, "You did not!" And I go into action. Things are crazy and hectic because we're surrounded by people in a loud water park, so I know I can get away with this. Just loud enough for him to hear me, I say to the bully from behind him, "Hey!" The bully turd turns around, and I proceed to go full e Honda palm, splashing right in his face. After about six seconds of splashing Blastoise level water in his face, the bully is coughing, and the girl is ten yards ahead near my sons. My work here is done. I proceed to say nothing and pretend that nothing has happened. The bully stands shocked, catching his breath in the lazy river as everybody floats past, oblivious. Ten minutes later, the bully's gone, and the victim has returned to merriment. I think the lifeguard saw me and just didn't care. Hey. Not all heroes wear capes. I can only imagine a grown-ass man just throwing water over and over into this kid's face. <laughs> If that was me, I would have just sent my two boys to go full attack mode on that bully. It wouldn't look as bad to everyone if kids were splashing kids and not a grown adult going ham, <laughs> throwing water at a boy's face. This next story is by user Trish loves dolphins. And it's titled "Accuse Me of Theft." Enjoy waiting on your packages. So I have a neighbor behind me. We have almost the exact same addresses. 
Mine is 123 Sesame Street Boulevard East. Theirs is 123 Sesame Street Boulevard. Now, we've lived here for five years now. We constantly get their packages, mails, and deliveries. And one year, the Christmas light company put their lights on my house. This is a common thing. Usually, when things come here, me or my husband loads it up and drives it over and we leave it on their porch. No big deal, it's about a block. Well, one day, the wife came over and made a huge deal about how she was missing her meds, and she needed them, and how they were tagged as delivered. I tell her I'll keep an eye out, but I haven't seen them. Two days later, her husband comes over with a package of mine, and he tells me, He's bringing my mail because it's the moral and legal thing to do. And if I have a package that belongs to them, that I should hand it over. The whole time he's getting louder and louder in front of my next door neighbors and some company. After that, screw him. Every single letter that I get that's addressed to them, I toss back into our Dropbox for the mailman to take. And the packages, I've driven them 10 minutes down the road to the UPS store, so they have to be reprocessed. All because I don't want them trying to say we stole some of their stuff when we've always been kind enough to drop things off at their house. Yesterday, the wife comes over and accuses me of taking a big check, a driver's license for her marine son, and yeah, she dropped marine no less than four times, and a credit card. She tells me repeatedly that they were scanned and delivered to my house. This is BS. They don't note the address of where something is delivered, they just mark it as delivered. She also tells me that she had our mailman open our mailbox to make sure none of their mail is in there. So now instead of just tossing letters back for the mailman to take, those are being driven down to the post office too. Not only that, I'm taking them to the UPS store. They have a post pickup, but only twice a day. So instead of the letters being taken to the post office and resorted, now they'll have to go through UPS first, then the post office, delaying their delivery at least another three days. Have fun waiting for your mail. You know what? I really, really respect this level of pettiness. OP taking the time out of his own day to drive to a post office just to spite their crappy neighbors. You're a lot nicer than me, OP. My petty revenge would be making sure their mail never gets to them. But I'm pretty sure tampering with someone's mail is a felony. This next story is by user Valheru1000, and it's titled... Look after my kids. Again. Back when I was a teenager, my aunt would ask me to babysit her kids. It didn't happen often, so I really didn't mind, as long as she bought me pizza, and her two children were well behaved. Anyway, she was a divorcee, and after a couple of years she remarried. His two kids were alright as well, and I didn't mind babysitting for them when they asked me about three months after their wedding. And this is when it starts going downhill. Firstly, no pizza. Second, they came home three hours later than they said they would, and they didn't give me a lift home. I want to note that I'm 16 at this point, and a very big guy, so no worries walking home, but it was 2am in the morning. Then, they started to take advantage. Almost every week, they wanted me to look after their kids, for no pay, and would get extremely pissy about it if I refused, often having a go at my mother, yelling at her, resulting in her crying, and I hated that. So one time, they called me to look after their kids, so they could go and do their regular, we'll be home by 10, but we really mean 1am. And I said, okie dokie. I rocked up, and sure enough, no food aside from the kids' dinner. I raided their fridge. Then, at about midnight, I woke the kids up, took them to the lounge, and put on a video. They were a little confused, but excited to be up at the same time. I then gave each of them a can of Red Bull and a package of lollipops. About 20 minutes later, the parents showed up, and I left. They never asked me to babysit for them again. Apparently, my aunt screamed at my mother, and my dad told me off, but he couldn't stop laughing, so I wasn't in too much trouble. Ah, the typical family taking advantage of family. I used to get sent to my aunt's business to help out after school for absolutely no pay at all. It was a Quiznos, so I got free sandwiches. So, yay. This next story is by user Mar10, and it's titled, Tailgate and Honk on a Single Lane Street? How'd that work out for you? 
This happened a few months ago, as I was driving to my work. I was driving the biggest Mercedes Sprinter you can drive without a commercial license around Amsterdam, delivering groceries. This story takes place on a single lane road with high curbs on both sides that takes you from one neighborhood to another. The speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour, although it could have been 70 in my honest opinion, except in some tight corners. Now, I've driven here so many times before that I feel comfortable doing 60-ish, just a bit faster than normal without the risk of getting caught speeding in an urban area. Suddenly, I hear a loud beep behind me, and wouldn't you know it, it's a BMW. What a surprise, I think to myself. I was quite impressed by my ability to guess the brand of this automobile because everything forward of the rear doors wasn't visible in my mirrors. The tailgating and honking continues for a little while until I spot the perfect opportunity to teach this IKEA pencil equipped douche a lesson. A long straight section in the road. For those of you who haven't been to the Netherlands before, our government loves two things, taxes and using those taxes to build speed bumps. As such, we have a variety of speed bumps, and this straight section was equipped with my personal favorite, the bus bypass variant, a trapezoid block just wide enough that a normal car has to pass over it with at least one wheel, but a bus can pass over it unobstructed. I had plenty of practice with these obstacles and lined up for a flawless pass while accelerating to a mind-numbing 70 kilometers per hour with the BMW still glued to my rear bumper. I pass over the obstacle without the slightest inconvenience. The oblivious BMW driver, however, hits it in the worst possible way, launching himself into the ceiling of his car and grinding his oil pan as the suspension compresses. After that, he kept a good distance. So I did some digging and I found a picture of the speed bump in the Netherlands that OP talked about, and that's pretty crazy looking. This last story is by user Brother, and it's titled, How do you like that donut now? This happened about 20 years ago, when I was a teacher in a small high school. There was one teacher who was toxic, and would say inappropriate things to students about teachers he didn't like. He once told some students of mine that I didn't get invited to parties because I was a stiff. His dislike for me stemmed from the fact that I was vying for promotion to the vice principal, and he felt threatened by it. He did a bunch of other things that gave me a slam dunk workplace harassment case against him, but I never pursued it. One day, he brought in donuts and left them in the staff room. However, being the guy he was, he put little toothpick flags in them with everyone's names on them but mine. He also left a note on the table saying, help yourself, but not you OP. The one with his name on it was one of those powdered jelly filled things. In full view of some of the other teachers, who were gobsmacked by his behavior, I took a straw, sucked all of the jelly out of it, and refilled it with mustard. Then I put it back into the box, unwrapped my sandwich, and munched away, and waited. He came into the lunchroom with a giant grin on his face as he looked at me and nodded. I munched my carrot sticks. One of the women thanked him for his donuts. He just smirked, picked his up, and took a big bite right in front of me. The look of horror, confusion, and disgust on his face was priceless. Guys, the only thing better than mustard would have been habanero hot sauce. But mustard would have been enough for someone to gag. That sounds pretty gross. And that's it for this episode of r slash petty revenge. Guys, if you enjoyed it and aren't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button for future videos as I upload every day for your pleasure. And I do mean that in the most inappropriate way, by the way, because I'm freaking disgusting. See you guys in the next one.